you're a front-end web free developer right now, you really only have two options for your JavaScript framework. There's ethers.js, which is the industry standard, or there's a new contender, which is called VM. That's what we're gonna look at today, which one you should be using. My name is James Puccini, and I've been a blockchain developer since 2017. If you're interested in DeFi and developer insights, then subscribe to the channel, and please hit the like button for your algorithm. So the first of all, let's get up to speed with ethers. This is a JavaScript framework which you can use to connect to MetaMask and it connects your smart contracts to your JavaScript front end code. So you can connect it to a website which will then allow you to connect your wallet and that can execute transactions within your smart contract. You can send funds, transfer funds, call functions, etc. You can also use it to kind of get data from on-chain sources and bring that data back into your front end. Ethos has recently gone through some breaking changes as well with their version 6 rollout. This implemented a lot of good features, but if you're going to be changing over to, from v5 to v6, now might be a time to look at alternatives. If you are migrating from v5, there's a couple of things you want to know. One is that the big number library is no longer used. We now use the internal big int library. The other one is providers. We set up this slightly differently and it gets me every time. We use browser provider rather than web free provider. And that's to connect to the local instance of MetaMask on the Chrome plugin. Now let's take a look at VM and see how this is different. So this is from the authors of We All Gonna Make It. It's a popular React hooks library for Ethereum. And the idea here is that it's a much smaller bundle size. It's meant to be more efficient. It's much more performance focused in my opinion. One of the best things we can do is have a look at the ethers to VM migration guide. This is quite useful because for every little bit of ethers code, common code snippets, you can get the VM equivalent. So if you are coming from an ethers background, it's quite an easy way to look at how the different things work. This is a standard um, create wallet function and send transaction. We're importing the client wallet and a custom feature from VM. And we're importing the mainnet, which is going to be a theory mainnet, obviously, data from VM chains. We create an account. So we're requesting the RPC node to give us access. And then we create a client by creating a new wallet. This is an account, chain, mainnet, transport, custom, window, Ethereum. So we're using the current version of MetaMask that we've got installed in the browser to create this client wallet. And then we're using that client to send the transaction. This is slightly different compared to ethers where you would kind of import the providers, then set up a signer address by connecting the wallet, and then send a tra transaction from the signer wallet. If you look at the benchmarks, we can see that all these different functions, I don't know if these have been cherry picked or not, but it's all considerably faster running VM than it is on ethers version five and six. One thing that's interesting is that for a lot of these functions, ethers version six is quite significantly slower than ethers version five. Platform compatibility supports all modern browsers and runtime environments, including Node. You will need a modern version of Node. It actually states here it's 18, version 18 plus, because if you use an old version, you won't have access to things like the big int library. The documentation is really good. There's a lot of example code on here, which will give you a great starting point for, to do pretty much whatever you want to do with interacting with contracts and whatnot. The one downside I would say to using VM as opposed to ethers is that when I'm developing smart contracts, I often write the unit tests in hard hat and that has ethers built into it. And then if I'm kind of connecting with a separate third front end developer, if there's a front end development team that are doing the kind of the web free integration, I can then just pass them off the unit tests. So I can give them the unit tests and that will demonstrate all the functionality of the smart contracts that they'll ever need. And it's already written in ethers. So it's kind of very easy for them to then incorporate that in the front end code. It's not quite the same with VM. I don't think it would take a lot to kind of migrate that across, or if you're using Foundry anyway for unit tests, then it's not gonna matter. But I'd say that's one particular downside. If you are using hard hat, you're kind of locked into that ethers ecosystem. For me, I'm looking for excuses to use VM more. If I'm gonna be doing hackathons and things like that, then it's definitely something I would consider to use in that kind of environment. For production ready code, I don't know if I'd use it just at this stage because it is still early. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. There's no security concerns or anything like that, but it's just if you run into any problems, it could take you a little bit longer to kind of solve them because there's not as much kind of people using it and the bugs haven't been ironed out as much maybe, and there's not as much code on Stack Overflow for me to copy and paste from. 
I hope this video has been insightful and has provided a lie of the land for front-end Web3 development frameworks. If you want to learn more about Web3 and decentralized finance and get some developer insights, then subscribe to the channel and please hit the like button for the YouTube algorithm. Thank you for watching.